Jake Tapper called Robert F. Kennedy Jr. an anti-vaccine quack during coverage of his bid for president yesterday. Let's watch. This just into CNN. Anti-vaccine quack Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has filed paperwork with the Federal Election Commission to run for president as a Democrat. In launching his presidential bid, Kennedy is the latest in a long line of family members to enter politics. Uh, so far, only Marion Will Williamson, who last month launched her second long shot campaign, has entered the Democratic primary against Biden. Kennedy is such a health care menace. In 2019, even his cousins wrote an op-ed criticizing his anti-science views on life-saving vaccines. Now, yesterday, Kennedy slammed the Fed's new FedNow central bank digital currency set to launch in July. Quote, CBDCs grease the slippery slope to financial slavery and political tyranny. While cash transactions are anonymous, a CBDC will allow the government to surveil all our private financial affairs. The central bank will have the power to enforce dollar limits on our transactions, restricting where you can send money, where you can spend it, and when money expires. A CBDC tied to digital ID and social credit score will allow the government to freeze your assets or limit your spending to approved vendors if you fail to comply with arbitrary di diktats, uh, i.e. vaccine mandates. Officials boast the digital payment system will enable all the banks, any bank in the United States, not just the big ones, to offer instantly available funds in real time payments to their customers. All right. This is interesting to me. The fact that he is going to issues that are very different than kind of the vaccine issues that he has been talking about and has made him very popular, frankly, in the context of, of COVID and the, and the pandemic. I think speaks to why he has this popularity that the mainstream can't really wrap their hands around. He is finding issues that resonate with voters that are not talked about as much in the mainstream that seem to tap into this fear of growing authoritarianism, which many people felt that the COVID policies, which weren't very well targeted to actually preventing the spread of COVID, many of them um, were a part of, and, and positioning himself as someone who, regardless of what the mainstream media is going to say about him, is willing to get between authoritarianism authoritarianism and the people. What do, you, what do you make of this kind of approach and how people like Jake Tapper are, are framing his launch? Yeah, well, I think the, the reason that RFK Jr. Is, is able to launch a bid like this is exactly because of the way he's being treated by yeah. Jake Papper. And that's not to say that I agree, because the, I think the, the label anti-vax, by the way, is fair to apply to him, because this is not just about the COVID vaccine. This is not about particular requirements for kids. I mean, he, he is against the measles vaccine as well. You know, he has a long, long history, decades going back, saying that all vaccines basically are, are dangerous and, and shouldn't be um, either encouraged or required. Um, but I do think that the reason we're having this conversation um, is because the, the CDC and all of our, our public health authorities squandered all of their actual, the, the trust of the American people on this particular COVID vaccine. They made really, really strong claims about it. They uh, silenced people directly and indirectly through big tech companies who were raising questions about the vaccine. And I actually think, frankly, there's going to be a tragic consequence of this, which is once people lose trust in these institutions, institutions and they're right to do so, then they go back and they start to question, for example, should my kids get the measles vaccine? I think that that's going to turn out really badly. Um, but I ultimately think that the, the blame for that should rest with exactly people like Jake Tapper, because he, folks like him treated any questions about this new COVID vaccine, even as applied to five-year-olds, as the equivalent of RFK Jr.'s long history, uh, for example, on the measles vaccine. So I, I think that actually it is the institutions ultimately that are at fault, fault here. Mm -hmm. as opposed to, because I don't think we'd be having this conversation before this pandemic, do you? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Uh, the crisis of confidence in traditional medical professionals has really opened the door for folks who have had longtime skepticism of vaccines and their potential harms. And the people who didn't want to potentially validate, I mean, you heard this a lot during COVID. You know, if you engage in COVID misinformation, you're going to undermine people's confidence in other vaccines and kids aren't going to get their measles vaccinations anymore. We're going to see more outbreaks, the likes of which we've seen in some of these rather Tony elite um, uh, Marin Context. County. I'm from, I'm from the Bay <laughs> Area, right? This was, this was RFP Jr.'s original beat. It was Marin County, right? Yeah. Uh, Nancy Pelosi's district. Um, but yeah, I think you're you're completely right. Once, once 
you sort of blow your your credibility and and silence people for asking really basic questions and equate them to you know uh, to being against vaccines altogether the way that you know more or less Robert Kennedy Jr. Um, is Robert F Kennedy Jr. is although I will say one thing about this yeah it will be fun to have somebody on the presidential stage who has every reason to ask questions about the CIA yeah look I think that's a good point and there are so many people who are voting right now who do just kind of want a proverbial bomb thrower like that. The idea, the appeal of an outsider is largely that even if you don't agree with some aspect of their platform, and I think that people are really going to have to wrap their head around this, there are going to be folks that support RFK. I experienced this with some of my listener base on my own show that's very left-leaning just last night. Even if people disagree with his stance on vaccines, even if people think it's even dangerous to say kids shouldn't be getting these routine vaccinations outside of the COVID context when they go to school, like measles vaccinations, they think it's worth it to have someone in the mix who could potentially have access to a debate stage and ask the kind of tough questions that establishment politicians don't want. People have made that case about the value of Marianne being in it, and this and this is no different. Let me ask you this, though. There has been talk about whether or not the Democratic Party is actually going to allow there to be debates when it was just Marianne and Biden. Do Is Marianne perceived to be relatively small potatoes such that the Democratic Party could get away with having a very anti-democratic non-primary season. Do you think someone like RFK Jr. being in the mix makes it more difficult for the Democrats to shut down the primary process? Honestly, I don't think so. I mm. think you would need somebody of a higher profile. I think this is this is the reason that um, you know I think it makes him easy to dismiss and you can already see that the mainstream media is dismissing him now. Maybe it's like Andrew Andrew Yang situation. Maybe mm -hmm. he can build so much, um, you know, so much of a following online. He can completely circumvent the the prime, the sort of uh, primary gatekeepers, if you will. Uh, but I just want to make one point to what we were talking about earlier. I think this comes down to actually treating people like adults. The second that you say you cannot ask that question, you cannot say that thing, we're not actually going to have a conversation like adults, like citizens, about any of these issues. Then you lose people's trust and your right to do so. Right. So. Um, the right to, to not trust you when you don't allow that kind of debate. So I, I really do think that the entire environment around um, COVID policies the, 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 and vaccines in particular has had long lasting consequences. I think we'll see it in the medical field. I think we'll see it in, in basically all other fields. Yeah. I think people rightly don't trust uh, what, what their politicians say, but that's been a long term. I mean, yeah. let's, let's not lie. That's been forever that we can't trust what our politicians say, <laughs> but we also can't trust um, increasingly what medical associations say, um, what, what, uh, um, you know, academic studies say, right, uh, there's a replication crisis. I think there's generally a crisis in trust in institutions, and I kind of think people are right to question it, even if I don't agree with every single conclusion that anyone could draw on the internet. Yeah, one other thing I just wanted to pick up on is uh, Tapper, I forget the exact language now, but referred to RFK Jr. as like a healthcare scourge or somehow a bet noir of people who are, who are interested in focusing on a menace, a healthcare menace. You know, I, that seems kind of rich to me when you're talking about a president like Joe Biden who has made someone like Steve Reschetti, a senior advisor who's a former um, pharma, uh, uh, a big pharma um, lobbyist, uh, have been so intimate and, and, and central in his campaign. When you have Biden elevating people like Jeff Zients, um, formerly uh, of the CDC, uh, the COVID czar, elevated to be a, a senior advisor, people are looking at that and saying, OK, like, fair enough. Maybe there are these legitimate uh, criticisms. Certainly there are these legitimate criticisms of RFK Jr. and his positions on a more traditional vaccines that have a long record of success. But you are here, one, making decisions that don't acknowledge the failures that your own administration has made with respect to COVID. And two, you have made it very clear over the course of your career that you do not support popular policies like Medicare for All, that you would veto Medicare for All if it did manage to pass uh, Congress, that you um, took more money from the pharmaceutical industry than any other person in the, in the Democratic primary primary race, and that you are potentially a menace to healthcare-oriented voters as well. So again, people who are entering the race and, and, and able to expose some of those contrasts, I think, ultimately benefit the American people, whether or not there are more, perhaps, destructive parts of this conversation that get to be platformed and mainstreamed. You know, it could be a real problem, you know, if there is broad uh, uh, vaccine hesitation around some of these issues like measles, mumps, uh, the way that we've seen in Marin Co County and some of these places where this kind of RFK Jr., genuine anti-vax rhetoric has been more popular. I don't think you're ever going to convince. I think that, so like, 
I agree with that last part of what you said. We can debate Medicare for all later. But, <laughs> um, you know, I, I agree a lot with that last part. But I think the only way to rebuild trust is to pe treat people like adults, right? So don't shut down the conversation. Yeah. Bring RFK Jr. into the conversation and have a real debate with him. Um, I think that the, the, the case for the measles vaccine is quite solid. I think that we shouldn't be afraid to have that conversation. And the more um, I think people sense that essentially the gatekeepers to the debate don't want to have a conversation, the more they're going to mistrust what those gatekeepers say and the more they're going to trust somebody like RFK Jr. Mm. Yeah, well, let us know if you are supportive of RFK Jr. entering this race. I'd love to see your reasons why in the comment sections below this video. And of course, stick around. We'll have more rising for you right after this.